And we're back in right. the duck call room. Martin is on vacation. Huh. And hey, I there didn't know it. This is the first time you've been on my podcast? This is the first time. Well, I'm sorry for that. Well, spoiler alert, the voice here. My powers to be have been, you know, they've dropped the ball. They've dropped the ball. We have a special guest from Duck Dynasty Unashamed. That's right. Podcast. Duck family treasure, a man who needs no introduction, right. but we're introducing him. Jace Robertson's with That's us. Right. Jason Silas Robertson. Happy to be okay. here. Si, you name me. I hey, figured I I'd be hey. at the top of the list of invites. I know. And, and, and nobody, I think. Yeah. You well, can't get, how get, did he get hey, named? You can't get good help these days. Okay. How did he get named? Mm-hmm. Look, well, Kay's in the hospital. And she says, go find your brother. And find out what he wants to name this baby I'm fixing to have. And I said, yes, ma'am. So I go to Red River. He's out in the boat running the trout line. And I, hey. And he's, what? I said, Kay wants to know what you're going to name this baby she's having. And he said, I don't care. I've done my part. <laughs> you know? And I said, that ain't giving me what she wants. I said, what do you want to name him? He said, hey, just go back and tell her, name him after you. <laughs> so I started laughing, walking walking toward the levee, you know, and shaking my head. So I, I come in there and I said, okay, you're not going to believe it. And she said, what? I said, he said, name him after me. Silas Jason that's, Robertson. Yeah, and I said, well, said, there you go. Jason. Does so Phil confirm that story or did you, did no, you he, just claim he it? He confirms it. Okay. Oh, no. I've heard it. But what's what's fascinating about the story is that Cy was the cur- courier during the birth. I mean, I'm shocked yeah, you Yeah, I'm there. the messenger. <laughs> Cy was go at the hospital. Here, yeah. Go here, find out, come back, let me know. <laughs> I'm going to back and all and he forth. said was, hey, I've done my part. You know, I said, well, it's a wonder I turned out like I did. So. Uh, hey. Well, no, no, I didn't know. That's why I mean you can't get along. Okay? Oh, yeah. I thought I we got along great. <laughs> no, no, you hard-headed rascal. <laughs> but, hey, that's the reason we couldn't get along because I kept you, okay, when I was living in Junction City every, oh. every weekend. Well, that I, didn't, is... I didn't know that until Christine said, you know, and I said, I don't know why me and Jason can't get along. She said, oh, I know. And I said, why? She said, because we kept him when he was a young baby. That explains a lot. That does. No, no. You it don't does. remember that? It's kind of terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is kind of <laughs> scary when you think about yeah, it. I can't imagine Si at an early age going, ah, boo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm watching you right now with kids, and I'm, yeah, I'm going. Oh, I'm the worst. I said, what is going on? Because yeah. yeah. I knew the first time I come over and Missy had the baby. Yeah. I thought to myself, I said, no, nope, something. This ain't good. This ain't good. We didn't recently have a baby. We have a baby. Yeah. But I don't know they if I ever. They have this a is... baby. That, not that they did have a baby. We're, they got a baby. Yeah, we're fostering a baby. Yeah. We got a call one night. But anyway, I knew, <laughs> you know, when I seen Missy, I was thinking, she's getting attached to that kid. Yeah. Well, so that's, that's, well, that's, that's normal. normal. Yeah, that's it's normal. normal. I'm attached normal. to that kid. No, no. That's I watched the other night. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. When you, uh, Showed up at, uh, I think, what was Willie's party or something? No, when we watched the movie, Phil's movie, new movie. Oh, yeah. that was. You had the kid. Wait, y'all have seen the movie? Uh, we well, we, we saw a trailer and a yeah. couple scenes. Oh, no. It got, it, you it, should have let him on. No, no. I got, broke down. Oh, he got heavy. I broke down and everybody in there was crying because I broke down. And, I've never seen you cry like that. Well, no, no, because you got to understand something. Because they asked me in the interview, you know, yeah. when they was interviewing me for the movie. And I said, hey, look, you got to understand something here. That's my brother's life we're talking about. Well, yeah, and it was your sister who, who yeah. has and gone the only, on. The, hey, the only person that was Farfield Robertson back in them days was Jan. Was Jan Robertson. Yeah. Well, All the rest of us said, hey, leave him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm serious. The whole family said, hey, Kay, come to your senses. Drop him like a hot potato and run. You and the kids, take the kids and run. Yeah. And my sister, I mean, hey, she got bowed up and jumped on us and said, hey, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. That's your family, and y'all are treating him like a, a dog. Yeah. And I said, well, he's acting like a dog. He needs to be treated like a dog. No, he like was. Dog. Yeah, it brought up childhood memories yeah. that I have not thought about in a Oh, while. no, no, no. It was, it was tough. So that's the reason I broke down because I was looking – 
you know, but a, a number of things. Me and Christine had a podcast where we oh, talked. That was my breaking news. Look, I have watched one of your podcasts. <laughs> That one, Christine, and I laughed as hard as oh, I no, no, no. laughed <laughs> in my life for forty-five, however long it was. That was Tacos. so great for me, okay? Because I'm walking down Memories Lane. Well, will you bring her to the next time if we do another TV show? So that way we can just have we we need a fact teller. Well, yeah. that I don't know, <laughs> okay? Because she that. don't. She don't like to get involved in that. She was, did fantastic. Oh, no, no, I was surprised it. she did it. She's I the really only am. person that can keep you quiet. I've never seen. Well, she, no, no. she would lean in oh, and no. say, "Tacos." No, no, <laughs> no, no. The first time she made me quiet is I, I was telling a story to somebody when we first met, and she wanted to say something, and I wouldn't stop. Well, she just wrenched over and grabbed my hands. Yeah. And it's the craziest thing. If you put his hand My hey, there. my mind went blank. I'm looking at her hands, holding my hands, and I literally blanked out. I said, She's a sigh. She's I a thinking, talk. He was thinking, I don't know what to do with my hands. Well, no, no. No, you know what she I is? I must have a lot of Italian in me. Because oh. <laughs> otherwise, because when you grab my hands, I just lose it. I can't talk. Yeah. She's a side charmer. You know how you see these snake charmers well, hey, yeah. you hypnotize you? She well, hypnotizes you. Hey, that and my strut. <laughs> She's took, a charmer. And that that was the funniest part. Oh, you and your dragon. Mark said, hey, I know what I'm putting on your tombstone. It was that strut. It wasn't, it wasn't the jacket. You, you it lured, was the strut that got her. I lured me in with <laughs> that episode. It. it was fantastic. Mm. Oh, oh, Christine. But that was going back, okay? I, that was the first start of it, Okay. With her, because I know every time I would tell my side, then she would tell her side, and I would go. I know I had a blank stare because I've never heard her side. Because she said, okay, no, you bought me a $16 ring. I said, baby, the only thing I put on your finger was a cigar wrapper. Yeah, she debunked that. Yeah, well, hey, but I still, I remember sliding a cigar she yeah. debunked right. it, but he doesn't believe her now. No, no, I'm serious. I just said, well, I said, well, it was good to go down memory lane. You got your side, and I got my side, and that's why cops tell you our witnesses are no, they're useless. Yeah, I heard you keep saying that. It oh, still no. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> because they're not. You can't rely on them. But our anyway, witnesses. watching Christine and me go through the podcast, then I go and watch the movie with Phil and Kay, okay, and, and just seeing God actually carrying us yeah everywhere we're going yeah and it was raw okay. look it was si, it's in, amazing in your defense when i first when it first popped on because i was thinking okay they made a movie most most religious movies are kind of cheesy let's be honest oh yeah yeah and so I, my expectations were pretty low <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, truth hits your eyes. Well, yeah, when I saw it, yeah. they depicted my childhood. I mean, just in the setting and the way the actor playing Phil. And I thought, I leaned over and told Missy, I said, I'm not sure I'm ready to go back here. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it was very well done. It felt real. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it was heavy. I don't blame you. I mean, it was a heavy, heavy. Well, no, no, it, it was because people don't realize, okay, hey, you're talking about childhood memories and brothers, okay, and he wouldn't listen to nothing I said. Yeah, oh, look, my dad was mean as a snake. Oh, no, no. Look, I, I've said before I wrote a book about it. I mean, uh, when he was carrying on like that, I hated my dad. Oh, and, no. it, and it took me a while to get over that. Oh, that no. was my biggest struggle. But I was thankful for part of it because I just knew whatever he was doing, I made a spiritual decision without – any it Bible based. Your life. Yeah, I said, yeah. I'm not going down that yeah. road. Yeah. I mean, I just yeah. I just said I'm not doing it. Hey D. What's up, baby? Hey, look, we lost some of our co hosts here. <laughs> they disappeared. Well, hey, he don't make any difference. <laughs> don't make no difference. You know where I'm supposed to go, JD? Where are you going, baby? I'm going to the cool, pristine waters of New Zealand. Why are you going there? And I'm going there to watch the process they do. They actually take this thing off of seaweed vines, some kind of seaweed. Mm -hmm. It's called Omega XL once they run it through the complete yeah, progress. baby. And, hey, look, it's for information of joints, like wrist, ankles, knees. Okay, mm. used to when I was a young man. Yeah. I had good SPMs body was in my body working. Moving the them fountain of youth. Out. The fountain of youth. Well, now that I've got older... 
them are kind of weak, so I need a little help. And hey, the help comes from Omega XL. Take two of them, two pills. They're real small. Chase them down with tea. Boom. Uh oh, boys. Guess what? Then they in the emergency vehicle. They turn on the sirens and the lights. They rush to wherever I got problems with inflammation, knees, wrists, ankles, any yes. kind of joint. Okay. And you feel and like they when you were young. Take care of business, and I feel like I'm a teenager again. Yeah, you Tell do. Where we can get this Look, amazing and here's, product. Look, and here's this amazing product. If you order it, you don't get just one. You'll get a second bottle for free. Just visit OmegaXL.com slash duck. That's OmegaXL.com slash duck. Or call 1-800-844-4888. That's 1-800-844-4888. And you will get not one. But two bottles. Two bottles. because the, the second last one is free. Free. I mean, in the last 10 days, I have been in New York, all over, done multiple shows. I've done two Unashamed podcasts today and a Fox and Friends deal this at 6 o'clock this morning. You busy. I'm busy. <laughs> but you need a family gathering to gain perspective. I mean, that's what we did during the first show. And uh, so I kind of use that as a catalyst to keep your priority straight. I mean, this is a God yep. thing. It's definitely yep. not us. And yep. use it wisely and properly. But the show seems to be doing well. I mean, the pulse was... Really good from everything I've seen. The, I did, you know, I, I've heard the, from fans. It was a couple of negatives <laughs> saying that it, they was disappointed because of it. What it wasn't what they was expecting. Yeah, the well, treasure. I have treasure. Yeah, I haven't heard any negatives, but I don't oh, get Cy, out much. Cy hangs out on Facebook a lot. Well, no, no. Know. I'm just what <laughs> yeah. people have told me. Okay, the negative side. Yeah. Now. You're going to have both. Well, I think people, if okay. they think it was going to be Duck Dynasty 2.0, uh, yeah, we're more. all about 10 years older, and uh, and there's only, it's just me, Cy. Yeah, because when Duck Dynasty came out, you yeah. had three, uh, what, an elementary kid and a high school kid oh, and yeah. a junior oh, yeah, high kid. And now you're, you're yeah. a grandfather now. Yeah. I'm a grandfather, so that's, <laughs> that's scary. Well, I'll tell you this on a positive for that. Missy binge watched it because we were so exa- exhausted yesterday. She watched the whole season yesterday which is kind of depressing that something that took about eight months to do she watched in one day <laughs> yeah but what okay then here's my question yeah what did she say about well, she came in and she said i just watched the whole season of duck family treasure and i went oh no should i sit down or yeah. stand up yeah. <laughs> she said well i'll tell you this it was way better than duck dynasty i said <laughs> There you go. <laughs> she loved. Yeah. She she actually loved it. She huh. did. She said, "I can't believe y'all made something as as silly as digging in the dirt, finding treasure, so interesting." Well, it's it's on that finding though. Finding something that's pretty remarkable. Well, no, no. Interesting, like when Murray comes in and tells the history. I thought that was that was very. I think it has a little more depth and a little. Well, more no, no, it's more complex than you think. Because yeah. of Murray's knowledge about yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. I think the irony of the mm. whole show is it's not really about what we find. Of course, we did find some very cool stuff. But because treasure, I mean, there's a lot in the Bible about treasure, and usually it's in a spiritual context. I mean, as in, you know, Christ in you is a treasure. And it's, it's always a, about relationships. That's exactly right. And that's kind of what the show is And about. that's what. Duck yeah. family treasures about okay is the journey of what where we going and what we're looking for because hey when you find out you're looking for millions of dollars in gold, gold that's exciting in itself oh it is but what surprised me was when they brought the well it's it's Aaron now yeah you can talk about it now. okay but anyway when they brought the space rock oh yeah look that and was I was <laughs> we was filming awesome. it. Okay, and I'm talking about it, and Jay says, where did you come up with that? And I said, hey, that's what was in my mind and my heart when I'm holding this stupid thing that fell from outer space, for crying out loud. Yeah, worth it. It actually you found, effect, a, spe- it actually found a space rock. Me. We didn't just find a space rock. We found we weighed it right there on that table. 24.1 pounds. Worth about 50K. Okay, wow. and that's $50,000. In min- in minerals, iron, and wait, iron and stuff. So it's like a, a tiny asteroid, like yeah, a meteorite. Yeah, 
Yeah, but I was thinking about, okay, I've, I'm holding this 24-pound thing, and I'm saying it could have been the size of Earth when it entered the atmosphere and burned up to this. <laughs> I don't know about that. That's well, I know. <laughs> it was but I understand. You don't know how big it is. Because, look, when we was at, we went duck hunting. On Rio Grande uh -oh. in Mexico. Here comes that planet burning no, no, up again. No, no. And look, we seen yeah. seven. Were you there? Yeah. No, but he's told me this story. Oh, no, no, but hey, that, that was oh, amazing. Oh, I was there, but I missed the planet. Yeah. It almost hit me in the ear. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. And this thing was humongous. The okay? only other person we asked about this was Mac, and he didn't he he didn't have much recollection Mac of planets there. burning up. No, I, I think On I, the trip. We yeah, were on yeah. the trip. Ugh. We were on the yeah. trip. I just... I missed that part. Oh, but it was got to remember, I was riding with Sai one time when he claimed we saw a black panther. Well, yeah. you did. Yeah. We ain't even going to uh, go there no more. <laughs> <laughs> I got T-shirt to say I do exist. We got paintings. The of oh, good grief. This is a very pro-black panther We just panther looked at podcast. one while ago that had a deer in his mouth. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, I get... Our email, we get like seven Black Panther pictures a day. Yeah, most of them are the same right. from different yeah. locations yeah. in America. From different, even not not just different locations, different states. Oh, and yeah. It's the yeah. same picture <laughs> of the black cat. <laughs> What's well, okay. funny though is the day we saw it, supposedly, <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> is we kind of argued about what it was. The Black Panther never came up, so no. we drive on down the fields. I so I jumps out of the truck. He goes in there. By the time he beat me in there, which he was a little younger back then. <laughs> By the time I get in there, Phil said, "So y'all saw a Black Panther?" <laughs> I thought, boy, this story has escalated quickly. It yeah, went from an unidentified yeah. animal to... And this just proves my theory when I say about policemen do not listen to eyewitness report. There's three of us sitting in a pickup truck, and we all three have seen three different things. Yeah. The well, problem with that is... We've seen what it was It's when we usually got close you're, you're yeah. eyewitness that's getting debunked. Uh, yeah. well, no, it ain't debunked. Well, I'm a, I've seen a Black Panther, yeah, too. Right. Don't, I, will, ain't getting the bump. I will say this, though. We were talking about finding that meteorite. When we <laughs> called Cy, I mean, the look on his face, he was like, you actually found one? Because <laughs> some of the episodes, you know, whatever we were after, we, we didn't find. But we found stuff that was, was interesting you along the way. You found the meteorite. Yeah, I we're like, we actually, and it was a big one. No, no, and not only that, and it was deep. Seven, had, seven yeah, foot. Yeah, deep. they had to dig a, with with a backhoe. That was a fine. I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a big signal. It was they, just a little peep. Thankfully, to the power of editing, I think we dug that hole for about four hours. I mean, it, <laughs> <laughs> it's a deep hole. Well, once we kind of <laughs> had a, hard. I mean, you lose. You know, I mean, look, it's it's as real as we can make TV. But you know, during the process, I mean, we just went all over the place because it's like we're wasting half the day. What if this is not one? I mean, but Murray just, there was something about, he was being careful because he didn't want to hit it. He wanted, but we had yeah. heavy equipment. Yeah. And Slowly. Uh, He's doing this very cautiously. But when I got out down in the hole, and for some reason, because I had asked him if you could pour water on them, just because you know, a lot of stuff you find, you would never want to pour water on them. And, uh, well, see, I didn't like, know that. Yeah, he said, yeah. Yeah. And so when I poured that water, huh. there was, I could, you, it didn't really show up on camera because they filled it. They uh, filmed it when I did that. But I could just see tiny bits of sparkling. I, I knew, I said. It was shining. It, yeah, there's, yeah. this is it. Yeah. Because when you, the what's fascinating about a meteorite and a palisite in particular, which is what we found, which are the rarest and, the, and worth the most money. That's what's so crazy. When you cut them open, that's when the magic happens. The inside. And so, oh, yeah, it is spectacular. So what do you cut it open with? Ain't it iron? I think you have to go get a special saw. Yeah, to, I don't even it's know like one of the. Well, have y'all done that yet? Yeah, we have. I I actually y'all film it. No. Well, let's. Yeah. We we haven't even taken a break yet. They're just gonna throw one in earlier because <laughs> whatever. Martin's not here, and I'm yeah. supposed to take. But yeah. we're gonna take a break, and we'll be right back after this. Okay. You know where I want to go? Where? America and buy American-made products Okay, and where can we do that? We can do that at my store. Hundreds of products. You know who made it? No. Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy. Oh, okay. You know, he's a he, he's a red blood bleeding American there who loves is, his country. And, and he just said, you know what? I'm going to make a store and sell other stuff that's made in America. They sent us a box full of goodies, towels, slippers. Them slippers are awesome. My wife. No, uh, no. 
Mark loved said it. Brittany loves them. Oh yeah, and all the my pillow products you know and love are still there. Um, what did you get? Anything? Did you get the towels? No, no. towels, sheets, pillowcases, Any, pillows. What else? Anything about whatever you can use in the home, folks. It's my there. store's got it. So you've got to check out the great specials on these products, like the buy one get one offer on the my pillow sheets, towels, pillows, and a huge savings on the my pillow slippers. Look, them suckers. They were originally priced one hundred and thirty nine dollars and ninety eight cents. Now they're only forty nine ninety eight with promo code Duck. Hey, that's good savings, boys. And let me tell you something: them slippers are worth more than fifty dollars. They, they are awesome. I wore them. I wore them this morning. They're great slippers. Just go to mystore.com and use promo code Duck, or call 800-881-0056 and use promo code Duck. That's mystore.com promo code Duck, or call 800-881-0056 and use promo code Duck. All right, so we're back, and in the break, Jace went and got a Dollar General bag out of his truck. <laughs> no, I want to show you my piece of the prize of the meteorite. Well, before you, you show have me a you, piece of it. Hey, yeah. before you show me your piece, where yeah. is my piece? You didn't get your pie. No. Well, you didn't talk to Mary about that. Uh-oh. You might have got. Uh-oh. You might have talked to another person. You might have got left just holding the bag. Oh, yeah, you just Uh-oh. got the Dollar General. I got bag. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. When you see it's a rusty oh, yeah. rock on the outside. It looks. But like, when you yeah. cut it open, you talking about come to life. That's, yeah, so there's all sorts of colors and yeah. it's shiny on that side. Oh yeah, and look at it. Just look. You talking about a design? I mean, when I saw this, I thought, well, there's another design for. The designer. The designer. Who designed this? It just happened. This it just, came from outer space. Just random. You got to have some pretty sophisticated equipment. I mean, all well, this. Does that show up on a metal detector? Oh, yeah. That's but just a it was seven foot deep. Iron. So you'd have had to have something like, si- I mean, uh, like. Uh, Murray's got. Murray invented. Yeah. I mean, those contraptions. Big, big on, Sheila. On the show. Yeah, he's got a big Sheila, a little small. Sheila. Yeah. So that's not like the beach metal detector finding that thing. No, but we did use them. You just put a different coil on it without getting too sophisticated one that goes a little deeper but i mean on the uh on our detectors seven foot i'm not getting anything there you you would have had to we had this machine and went kind of like a siren what was that like oh hey this thing is like big as these desks right here like 16 i think 16 foot square isn't it i think that's what he said Oh well, the, oh it's big Sheila. No, it's bigger than that. Okay, I mean, yeah, big Sheila. Yeah, it's probably from me to you. They named. Well, no, no, that's what I was saying. Like this, yeah. the oh, table, two oh, tables. Yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe a little bigger. Yeah, and so they drag it behind like a four by four. I mean, for a guy from our neck of the woods to come up with that, oh, that's it's big time. Pretty because you can't have anything metal on it, so you you know it basically yeah. looks like PVC yeah, pipe, PVC and, duct, pipe. And, duct, and duct tape with a wire yeah. running through it. Yeah, and it's got wires on it for the the one the thing that finds the the treasure. The treasure. Yeah. yeah. But then it's just like anything else. There's a lot of stuff under the earth. There's a lot of stuff buried. So then you got to figure out the sound. Same thing we do with the handheld. Mm-hmm. The sound has got to give you a number, and then you got to think. Oh, this, oh you can actually set something. it. Different things have different yeah. tones. No, no, you can actually set it. If you're hunting for silver, put it on silver. If you hunt for gold, put it on gold. I tell you this, I actually think, oh yeah, you can. I actually think that building duck calls for 25 years helped me because you're you're making all these different duck calls and you're trying to have them little different sounds, but basically the same. I mean, you want it to sound like a mallard hen, but this call has this tone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so when you, once they explain that to me, they're like, all these tones, the volume of it, everything that's going off in your ears is telling you something. And after you do it a while, you're like, I'm pretty sure this is a silver coin. Then you dig it up. Guess what? Silver, silver coin. coin. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how you get good at digging up silver coins. I mean, that's kind of the best thing I did. When we all go, I usually find more silver coins than anybody. Murray finds more bullets. Than anybody more. Like, we had like another fellow. That, how many uh, just silver coins and bullets are laying around? Or more than you think. I mean, I've only been doing this what three or four years, three and a half years, and I've probably found two hundred silver coins. Two hundred. Two hundred. No, yeah. well, you got to understand, Murray. Okay, they've got books written about you know silver shipments, gold shipments, all this history. Uh huh. 
Okay, and if you know, if you look up and find one of them, it's be worth millions of dollars today. You know, if like say if you found a, a three by three uh, strong box with well, yeah. silver silver dollars in it, loaded, full. Yeah, and I mean, look, they they have found. I mean, him and uh, you know his buddy years ago, they were stumbling around one of these things. Because I mean, we go after these things in the show, but it's written up. He, he got history. They had some story about some guy had buried all these silver jars of silver dollars. You know, I think they were in Oklahoma, I think. And well, they found them. They just huh. all of them. Well, they found a couple. You know, they it, the jars was obviously broken, but yeah. it was like in one little swath. They, I mean, I forgot the numbers. It was like nineteen in one spot and twenty one in another. And but he might know Jesse James. Okay, it's in the history book. He <laughs> he put his in mason jars, quart mason jars that you put can canon food in. Yeah, with a lid on it and put them in like hollow trees and everything like. Well, everybody just searched wherever Jesse James was. They out there beeping, trying to find them silver dollars. Yeah, well, that's, that's a lot. So of far, nobody's found it. This is the show. This is why the show came <laughs> about. This is very <laughs> interesting. I well, think no, no, I no. had a metal detector when I was like a kid, but I never. I mean, I found like yeah. somebody's keys for them one time. Well, you got to understand if it's backed you got by a reward history, part, huh? you know, like a stagecoach was robbed by Jesse James, and it, the strong box was like two foot by two foot, two foot deep, two foot square. Well, if that was full of silver dollars, that'd be worth pretty good cash today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, he robs the stage, and the money's never been found. Yeah. So everybody's out there. Beep, he spent it. Beep, 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 beep. No, he didn't spend it. I think no. he spent it. No, he He washed it. it. He didn't spend it. They buried it because he was always being chased by the, by the law. By the law. But I think it's most. It's that can be found. Yeah, I think most people view treasure hunting as like finding a needle in a haystack. I think that's the most common phrase used on treasure hunting shows. But you forget one thing. What if you actually find the needle? No, 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 because somebody in Florida did it. <laughs> what happened no, in Florida? I'm serious. Somebody in Florida found, found a needle in a haystack? They No, they found a catch of gold. And oh. look, the government moved in and took it away from them is what I was told. Well, they always government. Take, they always take. Hi. Well, no, no, no. Or and this was orders. like, hey, the the the, the, the uh, amount oh, was the amount was fifty mil. Ooh. Okay, this was on a pirate ship that sunk, yeah. you know, and it's done dried up. And they somebody was fooling around with one of these magic wands and beep de beep de beep de, and then hey, oh yeah, here we go, beep de beep. Fifty mil. I'm scared to search this on Google yeah, because wow. I know. Well, no, no, my right. wife was reading it somewhere because she's always reading. Okay, he knows a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no. Every time anyway. we fact check Si, it's typically right. No. Yeah. Well, he's had some pretty. Somewhere in Florida, someone found fifty million, and the, the last thing she told me was, but they didn't get to keep it. They, the government took it. But he's also come up with ideas that when you, it sounds good, and then when you go out there and do it, you feel a little silly. I remember when he read in some, he went to the doctor. I think we actually filmed this for something, but he went to the doctor, and he's reading the magazines, you know, Science 101 or whatever. That's it. And uh, he read that you could, if you played music of water coming through a dam, that it would bring all the beavers <laughs> For miles around. That's right. We tried and, that too. Yeah, we tried it, and uh, it didn't work. It didn't work. But I, I that, actually I think it was because the, the beavers were all deaf in our area. I actually thought it would work. I mean, the more he talked, I thought, <laughs> why would that I thought work? it would work too. I thought they would just we're out there at twelve o'clock midnight till yeah. about four. It makes sense. Hey, no beavers. No, not one beaver came. Not one beaver came. I, I think they, they're all deaf. They yeah. want to stop running water, so it makes sense. It don't matter if it's yeah. coming or going. We had a boom box, it's and they moving. had it amplified, and it was just echoing. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Right. <laughs> running, we, wa running water. They were. Out, they all just had to go to the bathroom. Oh, I was. That. I was anticipating killing a bunch of beavers. Yeah, well, that was the funny part. I'm it was about right. every ten I was, minutes. I was fired up about it. I figured it was going to work. Someone would have to go relieve themselves because yeah. it was sending. Yeah. Subliminal message. Yeah. Uh, you ever said that's good stuff. Running water. All right, well, we'll take one. No, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Martin's in charge of this. We're gonna take a break, then another break later. But we're gonna take a break right now. Okay, we're taking right. another break. We'll go down memory lane. We'll take a break. Jason, ready to take another break. 
The fifth segment's the only segment with a plan at all. That's right. Yeah. The others, we just see we what happens. We take happened. a break, but we don't actually take a break. Yeah, Correct. Yeah. yeah. We just. Uh, Sometimes we talk about Cy riding giraffes, and then people like it so uh, much they say. Oh, they drew a picture of him. They draw <laughs> pictures of him. <laughs> hey, Funny. I told you you could do it. See, I got my feet right locked under his, on his chin. And I got the two driving knobs he's got up there. So in the break, Jason that's was asking. How you asking change us, gears? Huh? That's ah. how you change gears. No, you, that's how you hold on or you slide down his neck. Jace was asking us how this podcast worked and what the plan was, and we had to inform him that we have no plan. There is no plan. You just and wonder. sometimes you end up talking about riding giraffes and yeah. zebras, and Here's, people send in pictures. Here's the plan. No plan. No plan. Right. No plan. We're just going to sit <laughs> down <laughs> off the cuff and see what I love happens. It. That looks good, boys. Hey, I, I, I like it. Whoever did that. A fan I, sit that in. I forgot well, the hey. name. Oh, I feel terrible right now. I know. I forgot that. That was a good picture. Oh, no. I'll right find it. We'll give you a shout out here in a That's minute. It. That's it, boy. We'll um, give you a shout out later. Things but Jace, that make you wonder. They do. We have heard a lot of stories about Cy in the duck blind mm-hmm. um, and how he kills all the ducks. And yep. That's that's why he remembers this that we don't get along because <laughs> someone in the duck blind has to tell Uncle Si and Papa Phil, Papa Phil. No. <laughs> we're not doing that or that didn't happen. Well when I do that, Godwin has witnessed this many times, that causes uneasiness, Titch- anxiety, Titch- Titch- emperor's Titch- flare. So that's why I have the reputation for not being able to get along because they don't like people saying <laughs> no. If no. you'll notice, there's two things that Cy si and Phil have in common. They have a lot of yes men around them. Cy <laughs> si says, here's what we're doing, boy. I just saw a black panther. Yes, sir. Yeah, but I say, no, that wasn't a panther. And then it's like, well, how come we can't get along? <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm not agreeing no, no. with this ridiculous. I've seen a Black Panther, is the only reason I get along with you, Sai. I ain't even yeah. going to go over there. Okay. No. You're, 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 you're not going to go of, there? This is one of them things we'll just have to agree to disagree. Yeah, have to wonder. Okay. So I was going to tell a story. It's like, so when we, a lot of times, we'll, Jay and I usually, will go out at night, middle of the night. Mm-hmm. And we'll set up a place for us to go the next morning because we don't want to disturb the ducks. So we have worked all night. I mean, brushing the blind, getting everything ready, getting chairs out there for everyone older than 50 so they can just walk out there and pop down. <laughs> and so it is a little annoying when we do that and they show up and size so like, why are we here? Right. Why we yeah. shouldn't here. come here. Not, this is a mistake. I wanted to put them decoys there. This That's is not. dumb. We need to go over here. Well, you know, it 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 it, it escalates. Especially when, <laughs> especially they when they're the ones that are doing all the work. Exactly. Uh, well, because Stone, I can, I can see why they're a little irritated. Okay. Stone says he just drops you off with your tennis shoes on at the blind, and you don't even. Uh, That's all you. Well, no, do. I wear waders because I don't trust them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he told me you wear tennis shoes, and I said, No, nah, I'm gonna put on my waders, you know. So I still think we're in the prank stage where yeah. we're like going to well, drop hey, him out oh of the yeah, blind. Yeah, you can't trust these fellows, I'm telling you. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, I, I did get to do something in New York City that, speaking of ducks, that I, to my knowledge now. I Probably could, never been done before. Never been done before. Hey, so there's hey, very I, few times in life I'm interested. where you have a moment that you say, has this ever been done in the history of mankind? I, so I'm in Times Square doing a bit for this uh water show which i've i'd only seen once because i was trying to figure out what we were going to do and i'm interviewing the people like they gave me five questions me and jeff and you're just interviewing random people oh random them. people one of them, up. Hello, come one in, of them was question. smoking a doobie during the interview Uh-oh. without a shirt oh <laughs> yeah. smoking a doobie i told my wife i said well that's the closest i've yeah. been to being high in my life <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, secondhand like, smoke's bad, people. By osmosis, and, uh, so, but it, in the area. But I was asking the questions. I didn't realize they were going to edit it and make it fun, But because I thought, man, we just need something here, and that's when it hit me. I thought, I wonder if this has ever been done. So, Because I had my bag, and I had my duck calls in there. I thought to myself, has anyone ever got on a championship hail call in the middle of Times Square right, with a thousand square. people that's in right. the middle of the day? 
And so I said, y'all can film this if you want to, but just in case nobody's ever done this in the history of mankind. I'm fixed to do it. I'm doing it. Yeah. And I pulled out that call, and I went as hard. And as long as you could do it. Just until I thought I was going to pass out. (laughs) But I was looking at people as they were just bewildered. Yeah, that's what I want to know. That's what it was. It was shock and awe. And And people called in 911. You know, People called 911? Yeah, well, the cops showed up. Oh, yeah. So I thought oh, yeah. somebody thought must have called 911. Oh, yeah. They, they didn't somebody, know what this was. Yeah, I, they somebody, thought it was some I think kind of. somebody's killing a woman, and I started screaming. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I rolled down a hill in Scotland. <laughs> rolled down a hill? <laughs> you think that was the first? That was it. Have you ever done it? No. That's what I'm talking about. No. Well, hey, I know one thing. That was just like I watched Penn and Teller last night. They're musicians, not musicians. Magician. Magician. Yeah. But that's so, close. So, no, no. So they got this guy, and I don't remember where he's from, but anyway, he's got five boxes, and they're numbered, one, two, three, four, five, and he gets five people on stage, and he said, hey, y'all mix around and, and choose which box you want to stand in front of. And then one by one, because he starts out his little deal about, hey, I'm going to save me and this young lady here, he got an assistant, are going to save one of you people's life. That's what the, my magic is. Really? So, yeah. Well, that's a so anyway, thing. So anyway, so five people. <laughs> Wouldn't they get he be five putting people? them in danger? Yeah. No, no. Yeah, they get five people out of the audience, and they put them in front of these boxes after they tell them to mix around a bit, and they pick the box you want to do. So the first one he turns to is number one. He says, hey, just sit down on the box. No. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So he sits down on the box, you know, and it just crushes it, and she falls to the floor. Well, he helps up. Thank you, ma'am. She goes back in the audience. Talking about, okay, we're going we're gonna to skip number two right What's now. What's in the boxes? Do, nobody Nothing. knows? Nobody knows. But it's the dangerous. He's already said, I'm going to save somebody's life. So look, Penn and Teller are well, These watching. people are risking their lives. Oh, yeah, they're risking. Who, you know. okay. So he goes to number five, which is on the other end. He says, hey, go ahead and sit down on your box. So this guy just sits down, crushes it, falls to the floor. They help him up. Thank you, sir, for... Y'all go back now, audience. Who are these people that? They just got him out of, out of the audience, random, y'all. And so he come back to number two, and he looked at it, and he went, "No, number three, okay, y'all sit down on your box." So hey, she sits down, crushes it, y'all. They help her up, and tell her to go back, and sit down in the audience. He looks at number two again. And he says, nah, "I don't know, y'all." He's asking the girl, his assistant, y'all. She's with Penn and Teller. Tell him, "Well, what number you we think you need to do?" She said, I, I, let's go with four. You're only down to two people yeah, left. We only got four and two left. All right. So, so, they so go she with said, four. I, I, I'm, I'm, let's go with four. So, with four. so it's the guy there, and he's a big guy. You know? <laughs> Tells him to sit down. He sits and crushes it. You know? <laughs> what does well, this have to do with blowing the duck? Well, no, no. Okay, well, no, no, because right. I'm telling you, this is the first. This okay. is the first. Oh, first. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> so they're sitting there, and uh, the guy said, well, it ain't but one. He said, uh, you've got to be the one we're going to save your life. So he said, look, let me take the box off. Well, when he took the box off, there's a giant, like the like that uh, Jim Bowie knife, stuck, oh. stuck in this under the box. Well, if he'd have sat on it, and Penn and Teller said, well, uh, after looking at watching you do this, all this, he said, this, I will give you this. This is the first butt stab we've ever seen done on stage. That's what I was talking about when you it said it wasn't avoided. <laughs> huh? It was avoided. Oh, oh, it was avoided because he said, "Hey, I, I, I'm saving your life. See what you would sit down on." He so yeah. he saved their life by risking their life. Yeah, by risking their life. Because if they'd have plopped down on the box, hey, they'd yeah. have been stabbed. Well, see, well, you didn't know because he didn't know where the knife was. What channel was this on? Huh? Nine. <laughs> <laughs> channel nine at my house. Okay. <laughs> It's, it's when, it, when, it gets to be about, when it gets to be about two o'clock in the morning, you need to go and go to bed. Yeah, they just don't do it. <laughs> no, no, this was on at nine. To I 10. will guarantee you that uh, you got one of those knives that can cut through a shoe. You probably ordered one because you're watching oh, yeah. this late night television. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, yeah, but I, I have, one. I have. What was that I was planning on ordering the other day? Yeah, that's the what hat. I'm saying. Yeah. The no, hat no, with the, no, no. With the yeah. fan in it. No, no, it was something. No, I ain't going. That's a ripoff. <laughs> that don't work. I, yeah. I know that don't work. When anytime they say hey, dip it in water and this has got a special coolant that to help you, no, you didn't. I understand. You get it wet. It always gonna feel cool. <laughs> 
until it dries out. You ain't going to get him. I boy. ain't buying that, you idiot. You got to get up earlier in yeah. the morning than yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's called a But time. anyway, I was watching something I was planning on ordering, and then I forgot. I said, well, no, that's probably a scam, too, so I didn't do it. Yeah. 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 You watch a lot of weird that's TV, crazy. man. Well, no, no. You were uh, asking me something about a duck blind, and we digressed. <laughs> oh, no, no, we no, but to hey. something that made sense. And yeah. Well, no, no, y'all was talking about Square. doing something first. You two blew the duck call in Times Square. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's the first. I just thought it well, was a moment this for guy Jack was a, a, he was a magic man. <laughs> And he wanted to butt stab somebody. <laughs> that was the first. But Penn he, and Teller said it. He just wanted to risk butt stab. Well, hey, well, he didn't do it, but it was the first. Okay, he tell me. I would say the next time you tell that story, just cut it in half. <laughs> yeah, that's what Well, I hey, I tried to make it short. I wouldn't even tell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jace, welcome to the duck call room. That's what this podcast is about, yeah. that riding wow. giraffe. Well, we're about time for another we're, break. We're going to take a break and get to our one maybe quasi-serious. Hey, look, I thought it was important. The guy invo- uh, avoided a butt stab for kind yeah, of That makes out. no That's sense. Cool, y'all. That's that cool. makes, just, hey. like, just like when you go to the drive through ATM, they got Braille on the numbers. That don't make no sense. I'm got not... bells on the numbers. <laughs> Braille. <laughs> hey, what, what number was that? And what did you get? He said, cheeseburger, or, cheeseburger, or uh, uh, or hot dog. He said the ATM. Oh, oh, I thought he said the bail. Something about a bail oh, on the driver. Oh, oh, We're gonna take a break and bring some wisdom to our fans. Uh, okay. <laughs> After that, we're gonna thing. go see what the fans want to do. All right, and we're back uh, with the hello at Duck Call Room email. The good part of the podcast. In, I, I mean, I thought you. Hey, no, no, I thought this your story wasn't this, great, but it was well, decent. Hey, I like it. This is no, this is part. one of our favorite yeah. parts. So, Jace, we yeah. have people email in. I read them, pick out some good ones. Sometimes it's just weird questions. A lot of times it's been advice lately, and it's been a lot of fun. And then we have some uh, kind of deeper questions. So it's probably a good thing you're here today. Um, yeah. So this one, the – oh, uh, before I get to this one, Avery from Pennsylvania drew that picture of you riding Okay, a Avery, thank you, sir. I just kind of – I think that proved my point that I could ride a giraffe because you had him drawn perfect. I had my legs right under his chin and had his his top knob well, for was holding a, on. It was a drawing, so – Well, hey, okay. I told you that's the way I would ride him. Well, Alex emails in from small town in southern Minnesota. Minnesota. Uh, with question about heaven. Hey. What is she a question about heaven? All right. So growing up, her great grandparents, okay. which is awesome, that's Ooh, crazy, yeah. uh, were a big part of her life, uh, big prayer warriors for her whole life, and they both passed away before uh, they turned their life around and returned to Jesus. So they prayed for them, passed away, prayed for Alex, and then Alex ends up returning to Jesus. It's been very heavy on my heart that I never got the chance to make them proud. Recently, my husband and I had our second child, a son who I named after my grandfather. My question for y'all is this. Do you think that loved ones who have passed away are able to watch over you? I desperately want them to know that I was able to turn my life around and I'm honoring them with my son. I would love to hear your answer on the podcast. That's a kind of a deep one. Me personally? You had a chance, the opportunity to know your great great grandparents. See, I didn't get to know my grandparents. I didn't get to know dad's dad or mama's dad, either one. So you're one ahead of me, but hey, I will see them in heaven. And for your answer is my personal opinion yes, they are up there and they are watching over you, along with an angel that God has put in your life to watch over you. So Sai says they're watching. I and that's a that's a tough one. I don't I haven't really delved into studying, I guess, what is there a connection? Like if you die, go straight to heaven, and then are you watch people can you see what's happening back on earth, I guess. I think they're getting that from Hebrews, Hebrews 12, twelve one. one. Yeah. So you have the faith chapter. Yep. We're studying Hebrews in our Unashamed podcast. Yep. So first ten chapters, I'll give you the quick review. First ten chapters. Jesus is the focus. Jesus is awesome. Whatever you want, whatever adjective. He's better because they were under the old system before Jesus, which was kind of a ritualistic. And so then chapter 11, 
he introduced his faith. So, I mean, when, you, when, you, when they made that remark about they had this encounter with Jesus, well, then what happens? You, you believe. You believe he's real. Yep. And when Jesus is real in your life, things change for the better. So then 12 and 13 is about, so here's what we do. Here's, and there's a lot of things about what we go out and do. I mean, it's a simple book. But that 12, 1, after he listed all those great people in the Old Testament, he says, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, therefore let us, I think it says, fix our eyes on Jesus, I got you know, it. letting go of what hinders us. So here's my answer. I would say, I will say this. There is an Old Testament story involving Samuel. I don't remember the exact details of where it's at. But he was summoned from the dead. And when he came back, he was aware of current situations. It's you can you can look it up, but it's it's quite the story. So you kind of lean toward well, he he now of course they got in trouble for even summoning him, you know. However that process, he was like, you shouldn't have done this, you shouldn't have disturbed me. <laughs> but I think you know I believe in the bodily resurrection. So you know when Jesus comes back, I think we we. You know, we get an imperishable body that's that's like him, but it's not bound by the normal, you know, laws of gravity. And, you know, like, remember when he levitated? Well, he didn't have to do that to leave. If you can come back from the dead, you can do whatever you want to. <laughs> You're <laughs> yeah. not bound by the atoms and molecules. of. So I think he just did that because he could. Yeah. But uh, it's like he ate fish post-resurrection. So, uh, mm. so I'm not sure that they're just sitting here. But I do think that wherever they are, it's something we can't comprehend. But I think if you're in Christ, you're in a really good position. And I do think there is some kind of presence that, that watches over us. But, and like I said, I threw in the Samuel part. But, uh, but at the Transfiguration... The two guys that Jesus had the powwow with, what's interesting about that is Elijah, he uh, he didn't die. He didn't see death here on well, this earth. And Moses, yeah. I mean, uh, <sighs> yeah, and Moses, there was a yep. big dispute about where his body was. So I just don't believe the Bible creates accidents or, I mean, there's there was something going on there. And then all of a sudden they show up and have this weird energy thing with jesus all about him yeah so i i think if our mind could grasp it then god wouldn't be big enough in, in who he is so I, you know i can't give you a specific answer but those are just a few things i just know this that i think the new testament is written by god's design uh to make sure that it's who you're with not necessarily where we're going even though heaven is going to be awesome but it's awesome because god's going to be there and the reason I'm getting that is John 14. Remember when he said, in my father's house, many rooms. And, yep. and I go there to prepare a place, a place well, He had you. every opportunity to talk about that place. <clears throat> but what did he do? He didn't talk about the place because Thomas said, well, how do we know the way? And I mean, he was insinuating, tell us how to get there. We want, I need the coordinates right now. And remember what he said? He said, I am the way. You're looking at him. Yeah. I am the truth. I am the life. And so you think about any trip that you take in life, it's more important about who you're with than where you're going. Would you agree? Which is true. Yeah. Which is true. It's, it, yeah. You, you make it's, the trip. It's the journey. Yeah, it's the it, journey. it is. So I do, I do view heaven as that because if he specifically wanted us to know every detail, well, he would have put the details in there. Yeah. He's like, you focus on Jesus. Trust me, if you're with me forever, we're going to have a good time. He's gave you enough. And I do think that's why he tried to describe heaven, you know, in, in the vision that John had in Revelation with the best way you could. But still, a lot of people are like, well, what does it all mean? I know what it means. It's good. Yeah. It's, oh, no, no. <laughs> no. We're no, talking no, about streets of gold, and he, he was no. just trying. To, well, it, no, no, because you know, he was using gold and sapphires and all this stuff that we put value on. Because yeah. Jesus actually told them. How do I tell you about heaven when, hey, you can't even understand the stuff right here that you're yeah, walking on? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I think he told us what he, we need. He told us to in know. parables. Yeah. But I think, look, it it's, uh, you know, the thing about Hebrews 11, he, he's told all these great stories. And I'll read the last verse in that chapter because I think it's a key verse. 
it says by faith, these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. And so you say, well, what's the point? The point is people who put their faith and trust in Jesus, and in their case, they were before Jesus, so they couldn't even put their faith and trust. They just trusted God. And the story that's revealed in Hebrews 11 is Abraham. He just trusted yeah. God and went to a place he had never been before. And then it says, because he was thinking of a heavenly one. He had already concluded there's a God, he's alive, and there's a place evidently where we're going to live together forever. That's pretty impressive to do without hearing the story of Jesus and understand that. I mean, he just concluded that there was a resurrection. He reasoned, the Bible says he reasoned in his mind. Yeah, that's 11, 17 when it says by by faith, uh, I think that's where it's at. Eleven seventeen by faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac a sacrifice. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. The only way you could do that. Because he raised them. He's telling me that hey, I'm gonna have all these, you know. Oh, I my know. My line no. will continue on. No, right before that, he says. Uh, he says, verse fifteen. This is when Abraham left because he, he told him to pick up and leave everything he had and go to a distant land. And it says, instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. This is 16. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Then he goes into the sacrifice that was going to happen. And then he said, Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead. This is verse 19. And figuratively, figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. I'm just saying, we hear about Jesus and we think, oh, God loves me. He died for me. He came back from the dead. I can live again. But these people were being asked to do crazy things, and they were trusting God mm-hmm. and and figuring out that, oh, he must raise the dead. When well, you're talking about some faith. That's big time. Yeah, that's big time. Well, Alex, thanks for your email. Uh, and, it's, you know, I think we'd all agree here. Your grandparents are definitely proud of you. Um, and exactly. you're going to yeah. spend eternity with them. Um, and whatever that eternity is, we can't really comprehend, but – as Jay said, it's good. We it's know good. who's going to be there. It's good. So I think that's a great verse to send us out on. Yeah. You, Hebrews 11, last two verses, is that what you read? Yeah. These were all commended by, for their faith, yet none of them received well, what had been promised. Yeah, I guess the closeout verse would be Give therefore. I mean, I think Hebrews 12, 1 is good. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, you know, it's because it's a legacy. That Let's throw off of what hinders us. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the yep. sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of, of our, our faith. faith. There it is. Can't well, get any better, boys. It don't get no better than that. Jace, yep. thanks for being with us. That yep. was a fun episode. I truly enjoyed it. We'll have All you right. back again. All right. I'll be yeah. back. All right. We'll see y'all next time right uh, here in the Duck Call Room. Thanks again for the picture with the giraffe. <laughs> Before you go, we want to give you a bonus segment about our new show. Jeff, you still running your food truck, son? Nope. Well, you must, when you was running it, uh, you know, it must have been good food because you kind of got a little little beef on you there, son. It's crazy that you brought that up because I'm having a problem. All the buttons on my pants are popping off. Same. <laughs> so the first thing I did was go weigh myself. Nope. Same weight that I've had for the last 30 years. So it ain't the weight. It's not the weight. Maybe it's just a redistribution of the wealth. Oh, Everything's wait. moving no, south. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bodies are like the ducks. At some point, it's all heading south. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need y'all's help. Missy has roped me into a treasure hunting adventure because one of her friends lost her wedding ring. It's a beast of a ring. It looked like three rings soldered together with a huge rock on the end. Weirdly enough, you say that, Jessica left her ring, which took me, I think, 13 years to save up money for in a hotel, she didn't realize it. And for two days, she's crying, I lost it. She was like, maybe I just left it in the hotel. Calls, somebody was honest. Oh man. Found it like cleaning person and we got it back. Oh, wow. Huh. How much did she cry? 
a lot for two days straight. Oh, man. I mean, you got to remember, this would be like, you know, me losing my shotgun or my duck calls or my... Yeah, that's all protector. hands on deck, boys. You know, yeah. Are y'all in with trying to find this ring? Yeah, this yeah. is a good deal. I mean, okay, I'll file it under Good Samaritan. Yeah, we'll... Yeah. We're, we're, we go find her. If it's findable. I mean, if it's not outside, because she was like, well, you can just run your metal detector in the house. I'm like, no. If it's inside the house, I can't, we can't find it. Where's this ring at? Where, where they live? It's south of Ravel in the woods. Ravel? Ravel. That, that's close to Baskin, which is where the Evans treasure is buried. This is in my top 10 of treasure stories to look for in Louisiana. I've already looked for it one time with no success. Well, what's and, the story on that? Well, a man named Evans accumulated two half-gallon fruit jars full of gold and silver coins, the man's lifetime savings. And he hid them out in a little short walk out in the woods from the house. And and they were never recovered. Let's do it. That Absolutely. Way, that way if we don't find the ring, at least it won't be a waste of We trip. can buy her another ring oh. all the gold we find. Look, let's just swing by the general vicinity and see if we can find the Evans property. All right, let's do that. Yeah, we'll, then we'll go find the ring. I'm in. I'm in. All right. Well, while y'all out there trying to find the gold and find the lady's ring, I'm going to help y'all out and uh, work on y'all's exposure, boys. What What does that mean? That means, hey, I'm going to get people to come to us instead of you knocking on doors. I don't know what that means, but... Okay. That means I'm working on it. All right. Surprise me later. Yep, I will.